Greg Chick, Ramona's Plumber here. Today I'm going to show you how you can get instant hot water and save over 10,000 gallons yearly. To do that, we're going to install a recirculation pump at the farthest fixture from the water heater. This pump will pull the hot water from the water heater back into the cold line instead of running it down the drain. I'll use this one. It's a Lang made here in San Diego, USA. And all we need to do this is a power at the location, at the distant location where the pump goes. Now, if you don't have power under your sink, you call an electrician and get it, or go to your water heater if you have power there. You can put the pump there and just a simple control valve under this sink, and it'll do the same thing. To install this, all we're going to need is a pump, a pair of pliers and a screwdriver, and two standard faucet supply tubes that come from the hardware store. It's as easy as that. To install this pump and hook it up correctly, we're going to take two supply tubes and the two existing supply tubes. These two existing ones go to the faucet as they should and have been forever. But instead, we're going to take them from going to the faucet and run them to this pump right here. And then take the two new ones and go from the pump up to the faucet. Now if the faucet is hard to get to up under there, you can leave those connected up under the faucet, disconnect where they come uh, off of the valve, and run that supply connection to the pump. It doesn't matter which way you go. The instructions sh with, that come with the pump show the schematic of how the tubes have to go. You can do it in any sequence you need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the faucet from, and because I've put a towel under here, I can catch the inevitable drips that are going to come out of this supply tube and keep the cabinet from getting uh, wet. It's always good to have a supply or a towel here. Right now, I've got my supply tubes shut off. So we're going to take the cold shutoff valve that we've got turned off. We're going to hook it to the cold side on the pump. The reason we know it's the cold side is it's marked with a C right there and an arrow right there, showing that the water goes in here and out the top. As you can see, it's puddling right now. And we're going to take the new supply tube and we're going to hook to the outlet of the pump. And we're going to run that to, back to the faucet the cold side on the faucet. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm going to connect that up underneath, run this up to the cold inlet to the faucet. Now you could use a basin wrench up here, which is common for a plumber to use, or you could use a small pair of channel locks. I don't want to climb under the sink, so I'm, I'm reaching under here with a pair of channel locks and tightening that tube. And then I'm remembering to tighten the tube on the pump. And then I'm going to make sure into the pump is tight. And they don't have to be real tight because they, they have rubber cones. Now I'm going to take the hot side that was coming from the valve to the faucet and I'm going to put it to the hot side on the pump I'm going to tighten it down not too tight because like I said there's cones in there I'm going to take the new supply tube standard faucet supply tube and I'm going to hook it to the top of the pump I believe if you want to use an opening wrench for this, it's the 5 8 size. And then up underneath the faucet, there is the inlet to the faucet. I'm hooking the half inch supply side of the tube 
to the inlet of the faucet. Now, if you guys are young and dexterous, you can climb under the sink and look up under there. Wear your goggles, cover your eyes. But I found it and I've got it tightened down now with my channel locks. I'm not really over tightening because it's not the pipe thread that's going to seal this. It's the cone washer in the, in the uh, supply tube that's going to make the seal. That is installed. Now, because I had my electrician put an outlet on the other side in this pocket, all I'm going to have to do is take this power cord, stick the cord through the hole that I drilled, and plug it into the outlet down there, which is connected to the GFCI circuit, the ground fault circuit interrupter. It's code, safe, and all you need and then we're going to mount this pump on the wall with the bracket that comes with it with two screws. Now to fit it in and make the hoses uh, line up with where they, their destination is and their origin and make the pump fit on the wall comfortably. This pump here has a union right here and it allows the motor body to rotate so that you can have your clock and switch accessible and the head rotates to where the supply tubes line up as comfortably as possible. If you have real long supply tubes it'll be real comfortable but there'll be a lot of spaghetti down there. Then you take your bracket that comes with the pump and we'll put the bracket on the wall with a couple of screws I've located this spot right here that's convenient for the, the length of tubes and everything. Now you could use one of your power cordless drills from your local hardware store or you could be Amish like me and use a manual labor screwdriver. I'm gonna take this pump and put it up into the bracket Rotate the clock and then clamp the bracket down. I've got my cord in the cabinet over there to plug in. What I'm going to have to do to activate the system is to plug it in and turn, it, and turn the water on. So we could turn the water on and check for leaks. If the bonnet nut behind your handle drips and, it has, and there is a bonnet nut to tighten, you can always just tighten that bonnet nut right behind the angle stop handle and then this one I'm going to turn on the cold and so far we don't have any leaks <clears throat> and that is pretty much the installation I'm going to plug it in and we're going to circulate it and get some instant hot water now to set the controls to fit your lifestyle. Now one would say, well, why should I set controls? Why not just let it run all the time? If you intermittently use water 24 hours a day, you then you have the pump run all the time and it will thermostatically run when it needs to keep the pipe warm. And once it's warm, it'll thermostatically shut off to save energy and reduce the heat loss in the pipe. But if, if you're not there all day, um, you don't need to have this heat loss occurring and you don't need to have the pump running. So in the sake, for sake of efficiency, you set the controls to meet your lifestyle. Let me show you how. Under the uh, control panel window there, there's, it says on, off, and timer. On all the time would be you're ready for hot water any time of the day, day or night, and you don't have a schedule. That's fine. You'll just have a little more pump running. If you have it in off, that's because you don't want to waste the electricity and you're on vacation. Now, if you have it on timer, first, this is a 24 hour dial. So it has one through 24 instead of the 12 o'clock with the AM, PM. 
So it's 2 o'clock, so I'm going to the uh, 2 p.m. setting right now, and I'm setting the clock. Now, let's say, for example, uh, I want to be able to use hot water when I come home. 1700 for 5 o'clock in the afternoon, and then we're going to run it till 20 hours, and then at 6 in the morning, we're going to have it come on, and I'm gone, done, and working by 8. So that's the short little window there in the morning, a short window in the evening. The rest of the time, the pump won't be running, even if the water's cold. But during these hours, the pump won't be running unless the water's cold. But because the pump will run, the water will be warm during those hours that you have set due to the thermostat. This is how you can set the pump controls to fit your lifestyle. And of course, if the power goes out, reset your timer. And this concludes how to install a circulation pump so that you can have instant hot water and stop wasting all those gallons down the drain. For more information, go to DIYplumbingadvice.com and click on some of those ads so that they pay me and you don't have to. Can you do it? Yes, you can, and I can help. Thanks for watching.